in terms of people who are actually doing research in AMO physics, um, I guess now that my advisor, he didn't retire, he went elsewhere. Um, <laughs> but now that my advisor is in there, the person who's been at Berkeley longest is Professor Stemper Kern. And his research group is called Ultra Cold Atomic Physics Group for a reason. And it represents actually what, um, what a good fraction of AMO physics community does, uh, ultra cold. So, I mean, you guys know um, the different temperature scales, right? Yes, what's the coldest anything can get? Zero yeah, zero Kelvin is coldest anything can get. But this is more of a kind of an idea, right? If I asked you, okay, tell me some things that are actually at zero Kelvin, um, then like you wouldn't know. Um, nothing's actually at zero Kelvin. It's a goal of how close can you get to it. So what are some of the coldest things you know? You can build quantum computers out of things that are very cold. Um, BEC, Bose-Einstein condensate is actually one of them. Uh, which we'll get to. But quantum computers don't necessarily have to be called, and by the way, they don't exist yet. Well, working one doesn't exist. <laughs> like liquid nitrogen, liquid helium? Yeah, so those are called cryogens. Essentially, you've uh, put, to, taken out you know, thermal energy out of gas to liquefy it. Liquid nitrogen boils at 77 Kelvin. Liquid helium boils at 4 Kelvin. So liquid helium goes pretty close to zero Kelvin, but not quite. It's still up by four degrees. Uh, well, four degrees C or four Kelvin. Uh, there are other things that occur in nature that get pretty close to zero Kelvin. I heard about we can use the pressure of light to like stop the atom. Yeah, that's a laser cooling that we are going to get to. Yeah. So um, I thought this was in one of your homework exercises. Um, let's see. Cosmic microwave background is black body radiation of space. And from that, you can infer the temperature of outer space, which is pretty cold, like 2.7 Kelvin or 2 point some Kelvin. Wasn't that in one of your homework exercises? <laughs> yeah, it, it was. <laughs> um, so that's the coldest temperature you see in nature, around 2 Kelvin. And this is the claim to fame for atomic physics. So in a lot of other areas, uh, nature beats us in terms of like producing very highly energetic particles. The most energetic particle we can produce in LHC, Large Hadron Collider, is not more energetic than the most energetic particles we see coming from outer space. Uh, it, LH just has more of them. Um, but in, so in a lot of the different measures that you can make, nature does it better than anything we can do. Uh, that's kind of true in many of the areas. But in AMO physics, we have beat nature. We can make atoms colder than they can be in anywhere else in the nature. And I think the, the, Okay, so this is where I don't quite remember. The coldest range that it can get to is around nano Kelvin range. And I think that means it's around more like a 10 nano Kelvin, 10 to the minus 9 Kelvin. And um, this is much colder than anything that you can get to at a kind of bulk level. Um, so liquid helium, you can actually get it to be colder by making it boil. You pump, up, pump it out, reduce pressure. And when you make it boil, you can make it colder and colder until it turns to superfluid at like 2.1 Kelvin. And um, you can use a mixture of uh, helium-3 and helium-4 um, in a device called dilution refrigerator to get to millikelvin range. Um, so those are more of a condensed matter physics. Uh, condensed matter physics. This temperature is achievable only with methods of um, AMO physics, and that, uh, that method is called laser cooling. And this is where you are cooling literally one atom at a time. You, um, so use a light pressure. So the Wikipedia article has pretty good pictures, so I'll just use this. So uh, imagine, well, actually, I haven't quite looked at this. Uh, 
I'll, I'll just use this as a prop. So imagine this is an atom. Yeah, yeah I think this is actually deep, um, illustrating Doppler cooling, but let me put it this way. Um, OK, so this picture is illustrating atom that's moving to the right. And the light is coming from right to left. And when this atom absorbs this light, it's absorbing some amount of momentum. And absorbing that amount of momentum slows it down. Um, slows it down. And, um, and when it emits light, so that, that absorbing the light, it puts it into excited state. And when it emits light, it emits the light in a, uh, that's the spontaneous emission. And spontaneous emission happens in some random direction. That's what this is um, showing. And you can make an arrangement in such a way that the atoms moving this way are more likely to absorb light. So atoms that are moving to right get slowed down in that direction. Uh, you can do the same thing with atoms that are moving to left, make it more likely for them to slow down. And sort of with one interaction at a time, you can take out kinetic energy from these atoms. And there are some limits to it. And you can you know, read all these. If you want to look at fundamental limits, people have calculated. And what it amounts to is, uh, let me see if I can do a search, NK, uh, nano. Uh, OK, I haven't read through it, so I don't know. Uh, I think the, the limit is somewhere around the 10 nano Kelvin range. So one, when you cool things down to that cold temperature, some uh, exciting things happen. And that's what his research group um, studies. And that's why it's called ultra cold atomic physics group. Uh, what we call cold is like a cryogen kind of cold. 4 Kelvin, that's cold. 2 Kelvin, that's cold. And when you use things like when you use things like laser cooling to get even colder than that, that's ultra cold. Um, and I don't know if he has. Um, I guess I don't remember how I got to the thing that I wanted to show. Mm. Oh, oh uh, this is probably a good picture to show. This is kind of typical of arrangements in atomic physics lab. We call this tabletop experiments because they fit on a tabletop. <laughs> Here's the optical table. These holes are screw holes. It, um, it's kind of like a circuit breadboard. Some of you have seen circuit breadboard, breadboard in physics 4B. This is a pre-made thing that makes it easy for you to nail down stuff so that they don't move. Um, and this uh, experiment fits on this tabletop. And I guess it's missing laser. Somebody's going to bring in laser from somewhere. Um, I have pictures of my own. I'll show you those in a little bit. Um, but one of the most significant uh, um, achievement that's been done with the laser cooling is the creation of something called a Bose-Einstein condensate. Um, there's a, uh, I guess that's probably the picture I should show you. Um, oops, um, there, that picture. It's, uh, they call it a new state of matter. And it's, um, um, I, I guess it is a new state of matter. It's a state of matter that does not exist in nature. So you know what like a um, um, kind of thermal distribution of speeds are, right? Thermal distribution of velocities. Um, like Brownian motion, things are just um, budging around all the time. And um, this is kind of close representation of that. This is, um, what this is showing is, it is showing as a plot the velocity distribution. Um, so at the very center would be where it, uh, uh, it's on, uh, cent uh, center represents an atom that's at um, zero velocity. And, um, but in the thermal equilibrium, the velocities are just all over the place with some, like, some kind of a profile, depending on the temperature. As you cool things down, there will be more and more atoms near the zero velocity. That's the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution that's, I think, covered in your book that we don't really go into, but you can read about it. Uh, it I covered it in physics 4B, not in this class. <laughs> and as you laser cool it, um, if you're dealing with the correct kinds of atom, something amazing happens in that all these atoms can take on one state, 
can take on essentially ground state, uh, zero kinetic energy, or this very low energy. And this state of matter um, behaves in un unusual ways. And um, so that's the uh, new state of matter. It was very exciting when people discovered it, got Nobel Prize, and, um, and what his group does is, um, so we are past that, that's like 20 years ago. And what uh, Professor Stamper Kern's group does is he uses these uh, Bose-Einstein condensates to do these different experiments and um, experiments and try to do some things better than what other people have. And what I will tell you is that this is kind of an area of disappointment, people working in AMO physics. We thought, oh, this is a new state of matter. We can do exciting things with it. And then nothing has really come out of it. Um, there are people doing, um, so quantum computing is one of the things people thought you could do with it. But then there are challenges. And there's people still working on it. But you know, there are challenges. And th this is one aspect of science that we kind of skip over until now <laughs> is that science, um, scientific progress is marked by a lot of, um, I guess, blind alleys and uh, it's a maze. And you, every turn you take is not guaranteed to lead to the correct answer in the end. And um, <laughs> that's sort of where it stands. 